Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimp with Limp, and I'm here with just a quick chat video for you guys. Uh, it's actually something that got uh, touched on in one of my recent videos, one of the quick review ones that I had done, showing a, a final production version of a game. And it's actually a topic that I've broached a little bit, sometimes on Whiskey Charlie, we've talked about it a little bit, but it comes up relatively often. And out of curiosity, I actually did a quick little search on uh, YouTube. I was like, All right, well, what pops up here? So I typed in reviewer bias and it's just a <clears throat> whole list of videos pop up with everybody talking about it based on their domain, whatever they cover, whether it's tech or travel, me, games. So I get it. People have issues and, and trust starts to come into it like do they trust the reviewer? Can they trust the reviewer? Because there are benefits to being a reviewer. And a lot of people, and I got to say, I've, I've had these thoughts myself, start to think that uh, the reviewer's been bought off. And I think that's going to affect bigger channels than smaller ones, because the bigger ones obviously have more coming their direction. Uh, but it is possible with anyone to have some bias to come in. And then you have to worry do they really, uh, you know, in my case, do they really like the game or are they just saying they do because it got sent to them? Now, for me, like my own personal biases, that's the, the reason I'm doing this, just to make sure I cover my basis. And I actually, I, ooh, ooh, speaking of, I got hot one time over this because someone accused me of it on uh, a Facebook, me and a handful of others. I can't remember all the people he mentioned. Uh but he had mentioned something to the effect of uh, that we weren't saying who we got review copies from or something to that effect. Basically, that we, the, the people he listed out, were bought off and just saying whatever. Which I don't understand why he did this because I had always been real friendly with him. You know, he's designing games and. Uh, I'd met him, talked to him, everything had been kosher. So I had no idea where this little attack came from towards me. But I ended up blasting him in, in the comment section on that one. But I was I was hot. But part of the whole reason that I even started this channel way back when, one, I couldn't find the videos I was looking for. That was the main reason. And two, it helped to make my hobby cost neutral. Because I couldn't really afford to get into wargaming if I didn't have some of the costs covered. You know, the disabled veteran doesn't get paid very much. And, you know, wife was young at the time. We did have one kid at the time. And now we've got four. So I kept, uh, kept myself busy between gaming sessions, should we say. Uh, it seems like so many of her guesses videos I've watched, it was like over the years, her size going up and down. and <laughs> She kept getting pregnant. Anyway, uh, it helped keep my my costs down personally. So that helped. And one of the, the neatest portions for me is I hadn't actually had my channel going very long when Lock and Load Publishing had reached out and contacted me. And I started working with them. And they were like, look, we like some of your early work. Can we send you a few things? And I was like, yay, you know, I haven't been doing this long. And, you know, I've already got people reaching out. This is great. So couple of boxes arrive and it's it's almost their whole catalog at the time and I'm just like uh like the kid in home alone I'm so excited and I'm digging through everything and real excited to get into it and that's actually part of the reason that I do have a friendly relationship and I've always been you know kind and covering a lot of stuff for lock and load because if they hadn't helped me when I first started out I wouldn't be as big as I am now because they kind of gave me my break into the industry and and helped get my my feet underneath me. So I've always been grateful to them uh, when it comes to that. And I think you're going to see that happen. You, it's impossible to get involved with an industry without having friendly relationships develop. And I've developed a lot of friendly relationships with uh, game stores, with publishers, with designers, uh, with everyone uh, across the board. But something I've always told them, and David, the owner of Lock and Load, can vouch for you. One of the first things I ever said to him was like, I won't lie. I won't lie for anyone. If I don't like it, I'm going to say I don't like it. He's like, that's fine. No problem. Told him I was going to cover whatever I wanted to cover, but I'm not going to ever lie to cover up something that I don't like. And I'm just going to cover the things that I, I want to cover. Cool. 
no problem. And I've never actually had a publisher say anything to me. I've never had a publisher uh, ask for a good review. I've never had uh, a publisher really ask for anything. They, they've only ever asked for reviews for me to, to do a video on it, but they've never asked for anything uh, specific as far as what I was going to say. Now, they have asked me to clarify things, right? Uh, so if I've gotten something wrong, you know, they, they ask me to clarify that, which I have no problem with. If I make a mistake, I'm human, I can make mistakes. You know, I have no problem clarifying that. But I've never had anyone ever say, we want you to say this. And to, to give some examples of why I think some people do have, you know, this mindset when it comes to reviewers is uh, Compass Games is a company that has sent me things along the years. And I I can think of one of their games off the top of my head that I, I, I destroyed. <laughs> I, I blasted it. And it was not a bad game per se. Now, they, they corrected a lot of their mistakes, but there was a huge amount of errata. Um, and the core game itself, not too much. is uh, Vietnam 1965 to 1970, I think is the name of the game. Or 19, whatever, I forget the years, my apologies. But the, the Vietnam game covered all of Vietnam. Real cool game. We're checking out now that they tweaked it. But when it first released, there was a lot of errata. And it was mainly in the solitaire portion of the game, which is my my focus. I always focus on the solitaire portions of the game. And I just tore it up one side down the other. And I hated it because they had just revamped. They had uh, improved a lot of their quality of their components. They're coming out with a lot of mounted maps and nice pre round encounters. And I was looking at the game, you know, pulling the pieces out. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. And I started digging through the rules. And I was like, what the, what, what the hell is this? <laughs> I still remember digging through that thing. And I was like, okay, it says I'm supposed to have 20 cards, but I've got like 25 cards or it's, I, I should have eight here, but I only have six here. And, the, the numbers were butchered. God, they were butchered. But one of the things that I've always credited Compass Games for is that you don't really have to say anything to them. Uh, when they make a mistake, they go out of their way to correct whatever that mistake is. Actually, I've got... Uh, where did I put that envelope? Oh, here it is. Sitting right here on my shelf. Oh, no envelope from... Compass Games, and it's got, you can see some counters in there. I'm keeping it in there for when I cover that game. It's a game of theirs that I had gotten, and they needed some errata counters for them. Boom. Arrived right in the mail. One of the things I always uh, gave them props for is you didn't have to say anything, didn't have to ask. You got the game from them, and it had problems. They automatically sent you whatever components need to be fixed. People make mistakes. That's fine. I've always said that. It's how you handle those mistakes. But the whole point in saying that story has to do with the fact that I think people don't watch enough of some reviewers because obviously everyone's not going to watch every single video that I put out. Right. And I understand that you're not going to be interested in some games. Some people are interested in ancient history. Some are World War Two only. Some just like uh, World War Three stuff, whatever you're into. Well, if I blast a game that's Vietnam era, but you're not into Vietnam era, then you're not going to see that negative review. You get what I'm saying? So you it's possible you're going to miss the occasional bad review. So I might just happen to put out a good chunk of positive reviews in the, the video sections of stuff that you watch. And then you're like, well, he says good stuff about everything. Well, I, I don't really say good stuff about everything. I do put out bad reviews on the stuff that I don't like. You just didn't see it because it was something that you weren't interested in. Now, I will say this when it comes to reviewer bias and, and content and, and things like that, is I do believe that there comes a time in which you're owed. And I'm, I'm very rare to say that. Because in my point of view, no uh, publisher, no designer, no one like that owes me anything, okay? I have not given them anything yet, right? So if it's someone who I've never worked with before, never covered any of their games, then they have no reason to reach out to me and, and ask me to work with their stuff. 
to to do reviews on it to cover it because uh, I've given them no publicity. This is one of the few industries that I really believe that you need to produce before you receive. You need to prove your worth. So the company is like, okay, well, this guy's, he's selling some products. And a specific example on that, double six dice. Really love their dice. I talked them up, used them a lot. Uh, 12 sided D6, right? It's 12 sided die, but it's got two ones, two twos, two threes, two fours. I've covered them before, check out the video. And I love their dice. I think they're cool in hell. I hate square sided D6. I always have. I think they're boring unless they're custom. Uh, just D6 or boy, you, you see them in so many different games. And I had done some videos on that, but I had gotten the, uh, the stuff myself. I had never received anything from these people. And I actually saw on their Facebook group, the designer of double six dice, it's just single guy doing it. That's small little business putting out his dice. And he actually linked to me and he showed it and he was like, oh, it's the Gimpy Gamer bump. And he was shouting me out and saying thanks. And it showed his sales going on over a period of time. And the, you see the day that I did my video talking about his dice and his sales were like this, and then they do this, right? So he got a huge bump of sales that day and he was shouting me out and he was saying, thanks, I really appreciate that. And, you know, we talked a little bit and I was like, yeah, great, cool. I appreciate it. You know, I'm, I'm glad that it's worked out for you and we found a, a mutually beneficial relationship. In that regard, you know, I, I've proved my worth. I proved that by me doing what I was doing, I have benefited him. So it behooves him to benefit me in return. I think it works that way with all the different gaming companies. Now, and I will say this, I've had it happen. Uh, well, what's the best way to word this? where things didn't work out the way that they should have because real shorthand on it because it's different for everyone but the the general gist is especially if you cover a prototype version of a game all right so uh designers publishers they'll make a prototype version it's not the finalized components they're usually weaker worse off uh sometimes printed out sometimes the rules are just printed on regular paper it just depends on how they're they're prototyped but they're not as quality as the final component, the final game. When you do a prototype coverage and you get that early word out, it is generally understood in the industry that when the game produces, when it goes and it's kickstarted or whatever it happens with it, and the final copies come in, then whoever did coverage for your prototype gets a copy of the final product because you wouldn't have gotten that final product out the door if these people hadn't been marketing for you. And all things speaking, I mean, the amount of time that we put into this, it, it's not even close. The, the Let me say the review copy is more than earned, even if you charge it at face value, retail value, instead of the, the wholesale value that's costing them. I won't get into it, but I've talked to publishers and I know what the wholesale value of these games are. So the cost of them getting a game to me now, to be fair, costs have gone up thanks to COVID and all this other bullshit. But the cost of them getting me a, a finalized version of the game for the work that I put into it to get that early marketing out there, it, it's not much. It, it does not even equate to an hour's worth of my time. So uh, trust me, the, the final version of the game is more than earned for what comes out. I did get burned though. I've, I've had some companies burn me and I get a little hot over that. Uh, there was one and you know what? I don't even care anymore because I'm going to name on it. Uh, DVG did this to me and I did not expect that. That that one caught me by surprise because uh, one of their games, like I covered a lot of their leader games and I really like Warfighter. Right. And this actually is strange enough, isn't Warfighter, but Warfighter was one of the first solitaire games that I ever covered. Loved it. Right. Loved all counters, ammo counters, going through your missions. Really cool. Was looking forward to Warfighter Fantasy, but I can just kiss that one goodbye now. Uh, but I did a lot of work, like two, three, maybe videos. I want to say it was at least two on um, uh, Zero Leader. Right. Uh, I was talking to the Chuck before the game released, 
did this big coverage of it, going over what's going to be different, the improved components. And I remember I put a lot of work into that one. And then when came, when time came and the production copies got sent out, I talked to some of my reviewer buddies and people who hadn't even talked about Zero Leader, hadn't brought it up at all, got review copies and then like none got sent to me. And I was like, OK, that's fine. You know, they they probably made a mistake. So I reached out to them and nothing, nothing. Didn't hear back, just straight ghosted. And I was like, OK, Roger that. I actually ended up uh, contacting the designer of the game and I was like, nothing personal, dude. I'm, I'm not not covering it, the final production version, because I don't want to. But they didn't send me one and I have no idea why, uh, especially since, you know, I did all this work beforehand on it and he was pissed. He was hot and he offered to send me one. I was like, nope, we're good. Don't worry about it. I appreciate it anyway. We're, we're good. I'm just I'm going to walk away now and I'm going to go in my own direction, because if you you're not going to support the people that supported you, that's going to come back to, to bite you in the, the hind quarters on that one. I still have no idea why uh, that went down the way it did. But that one, yeah, I felt I was owed. I will say also Thunder in the East, because if you've ever watched my channel, you've heard me talk about that one. That one, um, I'm not saying anything bad about them. I don't know how this is going to work out. But with the Victory Point games being sold and the guys, uh, Alan and Frank, who created the, the first one, Thunder and East, which outstanding games. Uh, one of my all time favorite games. Uh, great coverage of the Eastern War. Just just real good job. Streamlined, big game, easy to play. Really great. But I did a I want to say an 11 part. 12 part series and barely even scratched the surface of that game because there was so much going on. I was showing everything in detail down to the, the components and the combat, how to figure out your odds. And of course I made a little mistake here or there, but you're not going to do a 11, 12 part series perfectly. It's just not going to happen. But I did a lot of coverage and I've always talked that game up. So I know I sold a buttload of them. So truth be told, yes, I am expecting a copy of the new one, what a Mediterranean, whatever it is. Uh, I forget the name off the top of my head. I've actually done a video on that one as well, uh, talking about it. But yes, I would expect a uh, overview copy of that one, but I'm unsure how that would work out considering that they got bought by GMT Games. And GMT Games, uh, I can say, has actually never sent me anything. I bought plenty of GMT Games, but I've never actually... I, I want to say I'm right on this. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I'm I'm like 95% sure they've never sent me anything. If I'm wrong, I apologize, but I don't think they have. So part of me is a little, uh, uh, I don't know if they're going to send me a, a version of that one, considering we haven't actually built a working relationship up yet. Uh, they were bigger company. They worked with some of the bigger reviewers. Now I've gotten bigger, but it's taken a you know a long time. Big four war games, uh, still small in the grand scheme of YouTube. I understand that, but we're just gonna have to have to see how that plays out. I would hope that they would, uh, that Alan and Frank would see how much work I put into it in the the first place, how many I know I had to have sold, uh, talking the game up as many times as I've had. So I'm hoping. But I'm not going to, you know, die if it doesn't happen. I've got plenty of other games, other game companies that are reaching out to me and I'm covering this, that and the other. And it seems like they always send all their stuff at once. It's almost like these companies coordinate. What? He, he's he got a moment to breathe? OK, let's hit him with everything right now. I will say, ultimately, you've got to decide for yourself. For the most part, no reviewer is going to throw away their reputation saying a bad game is good for a review copy, especially of a bad game. All right. So if a game's bad uh, and you say it's good, I mean, you're, you're really not gaining that much. Plus you're, you're tanking your reputation because if people go get it and they're like, this is, this is garbage. This isn't very good. Uh, it's, it's just going to make you look bad. 
Now, yes, there is the theory that can be made that you talk up their bad stuff so they'll keep sending you further stuff later on. But again, I just don't see that working. Not as far as I'm concerned, because it only takes a few times of sticking your neck out when you shouldn't have that you're going to get chopped off. People will stop watching. They'll stop caring what you got to say if you say something's good that's not. And I'm not talking about difference of opinion. That's fine. The, there, there are games out there that I like that others don't and games they like that I don't. Like actually some that I've covered recently, the uh, uh, the Sparta game. I just put some videos up on it. Same people that did Two Minutes to Midnight, the Play Gallon games people. It's games similar to Twilight Struggle, that big area control world thing, you know, that type of uh, gameplay, red versus blue. I originally did not like games like that. And I had never really given Twilight Struggle a fair shake. And I got a copy of Two Minutes to Midnight to try out. And I was like, OK, this is actually pretty good. You know, I, I kind of like this. It's banned it out. Gotten into Sparta and I like Sparta even more. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I see what they're going with. It opened me up to new stuff, you know, area control, which wasn't my thing. But again, ultimately, it's going to come down to you. Do you trust the person? Do you not trust the person? Yes, there is going to be bias. There's going to be bias with anyone that you listen to. It's it's just a fact of life, right? Uh, we do become friendly with each other. I'd be lying if I, I said I wasn't friendly. People like David Top, uh, Thompson, publisher, not publisher, designer that I've worked with plenty of times before. I like him. I'm friendly with him. Our wives have been complimenting each other. You know, when you talk to people personally like that, and you go on trips and you get to hang out with them and have dinner, you become personable and you you don't want to burn them. But again, they're going to understand if you don't like something or if something can be improved. That's why, you know, I call out things that I think need to be critiqued if it can be tweaked or, you know, improve streamline or quality of life for the player. They understand it's not personal. I'm not hating on them. I'm not kicking them in the teeth. It's they're putting out a product. Their product's not going to be perfect. There are a few things that could be better with a fresh set of eyes. They understand that we're we're human. It's how this uh, this stuff works. Most reviewers are just not going to lie but there are some i run into a few i know a few i've spoke to a few who i believe would lie and i'm not going to name them here but unfortunately you guys are going to have to kind of think about that for yourself uh i will say i jotted down some notes on ideas of how to kind of tell whether or not you can trust them and one is like do they negative review anything have they ever said that there's anything they don't like all right so if they are positive about everything that ever comes across their desk yeah okay you, you might want to be a little wary right not to, maybe they got lucky and they liked everything i doubt it no one likes everything so look for that it doesn't necessarily have to be you know they're severely critiquing every game that ever crosses their borders but if they're never giving any critiques. If everything's a glowing review, then yeah, that might be one you want to be a little more wary of. And something else I thought about as a way you can kind of protect yourself when you're looking at reviewers and uh, whether or not you can trust them is if they are positive, in what ways are they positive? All right. So what I mean by that is, are they trying to word something that is really kind of a negative in a more positive light? Or do they kind of try to skew those negatives over into more of a middle ground territory, like a neutral instead of just calling it out for what it is, right? So if it's errata and they just ignore the errata or they make light of it, barely mention it, you, you guys will get what I'm saying there. Look at how they do it. If they're not just calling it out like these things could be improved or this could be changed a little bit to improve or you might not like this aspect of it. You're not hearing anything like that from them ever. Eh, maybe you should be wary a little bit. I will say just in today's day and age, their games, they become such a big industry. People are putting out so many, but especially with costs going up. We're going to see that go down a little bit and you're not going to see a company spend the kind of money it takes to produce a game 
to produce crap, right? We're not seeing a whole lot of one-upsmanship <laughs> coming across the tables. It, the, the people are just not wasting the money for that. Speaking of which, if you have never seen it, go look up one-upsmanship. It's all one word, one-upsmanship, all right? It's a game. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Go check it out. Dice Tower actually does a good review of it. It not a good review, <laughs> just just a review. But that's the epitome of a garbage game. I mean, that thing's horrible. You just you're not going to see a company spend that kind of money to get a game out with it, especially with shipping costs nowadays. That's just not going to happen. Uh, there might be games that are not as good. There maybe could be improved, but that level of bad. No, I don't think we're going to be seeing a whole lot of those. We will definitely be seeing price increases though, because it's flat out Games Workshop. I can't even afford their stuff anymore. I flat out can't buy it. Like if, like if I don't have a Games Workshop product already that I want, it's probably just in the ether. I'll never be able to get another Games Workshop product again. They, their box sets have gone up like a hundred dollars a set if, and they were already overly expensive. I'm I'm way on a tangent here, but oh my god, are they just so expensive? For what you get screw games workshop it's not worth it it is not it is not worth mortgaging your firstborn child to get a damn game i mean a handful of minis some and some cardboard for almost like 300 bucks at the, the hell with those people warlord games uh mantic games uh, others off i can't remember off the top of my head but plenty of other companies out there turning out quality products that are not Games Workshop. Games Workshop can eat me. They are just too damn expensive now. Anyway, I'll get off my tangent. That's it. The reviewer bias. Now you guys know mine. But yeah, I'm not going to sacrifice my integrity, my reputation to say yes to something that I don't like. Right? I, I'm not going to destroy someone that I'm friendly with unless they've earned it. You know, They'd have to put out like some one-upsmanship. But if they put out something that uh, I don't like or I think needs to be changed or it can be critiqued, uh, I'll, I'll definitely let them know. Prototypes can be handled a little differently because I will critique a prototype. But the good part about a prototype is if it's got a mistake in it or things are wrong or need to be changed, I know that's going to get changed before the final version. So I am a little lighter on prototypes than I would be if it was a final product. All right, but that's it. I could go on talking about this subject for a while. If you do have any questions about it, though, feel free to put it down below and I will try to answer any questions you do have. All right, you guys take care. I will catch you in the next one.